Hello, everyone, and welcome to Blissful Consults for our next month. You all submitted some really interesting questions. I'm excited to jump in. So let us get... All right. So let us get to these questions. Okay. So we have our first one from Francine in California. My sister and I are both trauma survivors. We grew up in a dysfunctional home with physical and sexual violence from very early childhood throughout our teens. We both suffered, but I will admit that my sister suffered more. She was often the target of the abuse. Now she can't maintain even the most basic relationships. I've always wanted to have a close connection to her, but she can be so cruel to me. Last week, she said a psychiatrist diagnosed her with borderline personality disorder. <clears throat> Is BPD a real diagnosis or just an excuse for bad behavior? Francine, thank you so much for writing in. And I also just want to express my sympathy and love and admiration for you and your sister for living through what you lived through you didn't deserve to be harmed when you were little um i'm really i'm really glad that you had each other and it sounds like your sibling relationship has been really shaped naturally by what you experienced as kids and the way that the repercussions from that have unfolded um in your in your adult lives um, so thank you so much for trusting me to field your question and for sharing all that you did about your childhood trauma and the childhood trauma your sister endured as well. Um, so in terms of your question, so your sister has been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and you're asking, is this a real thing or is this an excuse for bad behavior? So I will start out by saying, yes, borderline personality disorder is a real, it's a real, it's real. It's, um, it often emerges in people who have endured very, who have endured really chronic trauma across multiple stages of development um, and were unable to secure coping mechanisms and the trauma just kind of kept unfolding and unfolding and increasing and increasing. So the person didn't have the coping mechanisms, again, across multiple stages of development. So early childhood, young, being a young child, zero to three, um, even maybe infancy. So infancy, zero to three, then in elementary, then middle school, and this person, the trauma just keeps, the wave keeps coming, and the child basically doesn't have the the ability to accrue coping mechanisms at that at that speed and also for that degree of of distress our bodies and our minds were were not built to live through that degree of trauma across that many developmental stages um so one one common feature of individuals who have borderline personality disorder is that they've gone through a lot of distress, particularly in the context of relationships. Um, people have often not proven that they can be trusted. Um, there might be a general skepticism about trusting people and the safety in relationships. Um, also, it's important to note with borderline personality disorder that it is, I w I'm always, you know, extremely cautious about diagnosing that, about labeling someone in that way. And I, this is for a couple of reasons, because number one, although the DSM doesn't use, um, although the DSM-5 doesn't use the axes anymore, um, the DSM-4 and earlier used something called an axis format. So you'd have like your first axis was, um, your first axis was whatever the clinical diagnosis was. So depression, anxiety, 
um, PTSD. And then your second axis was something for personality disorders. And so the way that personality disorders are differentiated from other diagnoses is it's the idea that the fabric of the person's identity and the way that they see themselves and they see the world is shifted because of the experiences that they've had, the distress that they've had. And um, often personality disorders are, they're, 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 they're more all encompassing about a person's identity. Um, and so, yes, it's a real diagnosis. And also I think it's one that takes a fair amount of time and time to know the person, to really understand, is this, are these symptoms truly characterological? Are they truly embedded in the identity of the person? Because that's what a personality disorder um, really is, is, is demonstrating. And I, I would also say that before diagnosing a personality disorder, there's, I think there should be other providers who are also weighing in. So I personally have never and would never diagnose a personality, diagnose someone with a personality disorder unless I've known them quite some time. And also, um, unless I'm collaborating with a team. So like a psychiatrist, maybe a medical doctor, I'd like to have met the person's family or close friends um, because it is a diagnosis that indicates a really pervasive shift in a person's identity. Going back to this person's question, we just go back in here. So I would say, yes, it is, it is, a, oops, I just did that again. Yes, it is a real diagnosis. And um, I think it would be helpful if you're working to build a relationship with your sister to gently <laughs> say that you would be open to, to go into a family meeting with your sister and um, her mental health provider, her psychiatrist, not only to indicate that you're supportive of her of her process in healing from borderline personality disorder, but also to just understand what that diagnosis means um, for your sister and then also by extension for you. And and you know, you said here, is this just an excuse for bad behavior? Um a diagnosis is never an excuse for any type of behavior. A di in my thought, a diagnosis is um, a context and a structure for understanding why certain behavior might be happening. But behavior is that person's choice in that moment, and we can, you know, we can I we can support individuals with different coping skills, with different interventions, with medications to so help them make choices that are in line with their values and who they want to be. Um, but ultimately, there's that space for a person to make a choice. Um, so I would say this diagnosis is, should, is really more about illuminating and providing a rationale and an understanding for why your sister might behave in certain ways. And it sounds like she's engaged in treatment, which is really, that's, it's really brave and, um, takes a lot of courage to meet with someone, particularly when you've been diagnosed with a, with borderline personality disorder, because it's a very, very stigmatized um, diagnosis. And it's unfortunate because individuals diagnosed with, with that generally have gone through incredible amounts of trauma um, at young ages and haven't, haven't had the opportunity f for their coping skills and their support systems to outweigh um, the negatives of the trauma. Um, so let's see, what are some symptoms? Yeah, so let's go through that. So this is going to be posted. Um, this is going to be posted on my story um, after I get off of here. So some signs and symptoms um, of borderline personality disorder. So one, in terms of history. 
trauma is a really big one. So the events in a person's life, usually a child's, the events in a child's life have are greater than their ability to cope, both mentally and physically. So if there's abuse going on in the home and the child has some coping skills, maybe distraction, watching TV, looking at an iPad, but the abuse is too much and it goes above their coping, they're going to start doing things like sort of disconnecting, daydreaming. And in the moment, these are adaptive because... A kid has to do what they have to do when they're in harm's way. But over time, those coping skills that a person learned when they were little, as they get older and they have more agency and they have more autonomy, they become less helpful because they're not needed, but it's the only thing the person knows. So that's one That's one part of history that's important to understand. So some signs and symptoms... Um, this is one of the major ones. It's an unclear or shifting self-image. So we all have this idea about who we are. We have the core of ourselves. And most people, when there isn't a personality disorder that has shown up, we have a general sense of self. So we have a, a, a general cohesion about our identity and who we are. People with borderline personality disorder, that can shift and move depending on who they're with, depending on the context. And that once might have been adaptive, that might have been a survival strategy. And now in adulthood or young adulthood, that's looking like, I don't know who I am. I change based on who I'm around. I engage in ways of being that aren't reflective of my real values because I want connection or I want attention or I want to get my needs met and I don't know how other than to shift who I am as a person in order to get my needs met, which ultimately leaves people feeling confused. It leaves people feeling dissociated and generally not aligned. So that's one, a big one is unclear shifting self-image. Another one is a fear of abandonment. So again, individuals with BPD um, have often experienced tremendous amount of abandonment in their lives. And the only, and that fear stays and it's real. And there's a, there's an idea that any person there's an idea that any person who that individual engages with, there's this fear that they might leave. And so the person with BPD might do things that push people away because they're afraid of getting too close, but they yearn for closeness and they yearn for connection. But once they're in that connected relationship, it feels very scary and there can be pushback away. Um, chronic feelings of emptiness. Um, so again, consider a person has a long history of abuse. They then start engaging in relationships where they're terrified of being left. So they start shifting who they are. They start sort of manipulating or engaging in strategic relationship dynamics in order to get their needs met. And then ultimately when they're alone, there's still this question, am I enough? Do people really love me? Will people continue to stay and show up for me, even if I demonstrate who I really am? But do I know who I really am? This leads to chronic feelings of emptiness. Um, it goes without staying. Unstable relationships is a big key part of BPD. Um, a lot of difficulty forming healthy attachments, maintaining attachments across time. Um, and then the last two that, you know, I think are important and they're connected is emotional, emotional swings and then also self-harm. Um, so we see with, you know, people with BPD, be, our, our, our safety, our sense of stability in life is largely dependent on our relationships. And I think for those of us without BPD, we can sometimes take the stability in our relationships for granted. Um, and even if we might have arguments with people or we might disagree or we might not see our friends for a while, there's a general sense that I'm connected to others. 
people know who I really am and I feel safe and okay. Um, for people with BPD, that foundation is not there. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of questioning. There's a lot of fear around who really loves me, who's going to be here for me, and who can I trust. And when that gets when that foundation isn't there, there can be a lot of mood swings, a lot of very intense mood swings. So feeling incredibly happy and elated <coughs> when you're feeling connected. And then also feeling really withdrawn and really upset and really depressed when 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 you're when a person is by themselves. So what I would say is, if you wonder if you have um, if if you have some of the symptoms I talked about, you wonder if you might have BPD. The first thing is really just to get connected to a really good therapist. I would suggest therapists that have training in um, trauma based trauma-informed counseling. So a therapist who specifies that they have experience with trauma. It's even better to find someone who works with people who have BPD and um, also a a really good psychiatrist. Everyone doesn't need medications, but I always suggest to people, just see what the psychiatrist has to say. You don't have to take their suggestion. You can just have it be more information for you. Um, Francine, I wish you so much luck with your sister. The fact that you wrote in and are inquiring about her diagnosis and how to participate, it shows that you're committed to this relationship. And I think your sister's super lucky to have you. Um, Siblings who have gone through trauma together have a bond that can never be broken. And so I hope you all can tap into that and, and find joy and connection with each other.